The man played defense when he needed to down low in the paint. The man was getting boards for you, securing things, and the man was hitting big shots. Big Perm is here to make a statement. Yeah, we talk a lot. You know, we talked about power forwards a lot, and kind of how this tournament is huge for people's draft stock. Right? All right, we're back with another episode with the misadventures of Vincent Valerio. Personally, it's one of my favorite episodes because I named it. It's called Gamers Gambit. That was and a nice touch. Was thank nice you. Touch. Yes. And it details your transition from leaving a high salary job to becoming a professional 2K player. So let's just hop right into that. Yeah, so when I think about it, like, you going to law school was super random for me because that was not something I wanted to do at all when I was growing up. Like, I, you know, we talked about it a little bit in, in some of the previous episodes. You know, I, I wasn't the best kid around, like, 18, 19 years old. Uh, I was pre-med, had this, this very prestigious program I was in, and I fell out because I wasn't mentally ready for it. So going to law school really was for my mother. Um, you know, I struggled with some things, and it was really for me to pay her back, uh, try to make something of myself, come out with a doctorate degree. So, uh, you know, once I finished law school and everything, I, I, I felt like I really had accomplished something. Like, get, getting through it was, like, one of the hardest things for me. But now I'm in there, and I'm working as a lawyer, and, like, yeah, it's it's whatever. People think it's super prestigious, and it is. Like, I did go through a lot of schooling. I learned a lot of stuff, but um, the real nitty-gritty of being a lawyer, it, it wears on you especially when you're at a small firm like I was. And um, once I decided to leave finally, things did not get easier at all. It actually got way more difficult because I had some money saved up, but um, all I could do really while I was playing 2K was try to make money on the side by going to court cases randomly and, and delivering documents, very simple stuff just to try to stay afloat. Now on the other side of things, deciding to become a professional 2K player, there's one step right before that. Uh, I actually started a YouTube channel with my brother called the Valor Brothers, where we had played 2K and uh, we would play a lot of park and rec and stuff like that, more casual game modes. And uh, sadly, it didn't work out. And um, that was really tough because I put a lot of time and effort into it. I was editing my own videos. Like me and my brother were doing all the all the groundwork and technical work behind the scenes, just solo, uh, just the two of us. So when that fell, I basically had at that time decided right when it wasn't working that hey I love 2k I've been playing it for 20 years I'm gonna try to go go professional become a professional 2k player um, I had heard about the 2k league I didn't really know a lot about it I had a little intermission of playing video games while I was in law school so coming back into that community being like 27 28 was kind of crazy because it's a definitely young man's game and uh, it was super difficult I had no connection to the community community at all I would just reach out to random teams and random players and just try to get a shot and um, none of that worked I was kind of really lost on where to even go or what to do and I found this random what they call draft league where you put your name into a pool and they draft you and looking back now it's a very low level league but that actually started my career off I went in there made some connections with people and while this is going on, I, I, I'm Jeff, I'm just thinking about like While all that's going on, I, COVID literally hits. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Thursday night. And it was another day of fast-moving developments in this coronavirus emergency, and we will carefully get through it all right here with you tonight. We're going to begin with the states of emergency across this country, and now here in New York City, a state of emergency declared as well. Tonight, more than 1,300 people sickened in the U.S. At least 39 have died in this country. At least 45 states now and the District of Columbia reporting cases. Additional school districts shutting down today. Now 4.9 million school children across the country at home. Like while I'm trying to figure it out, like COVID hit and I can't even work as an attorney anymore. Like they shut down the courts. So now I'm sitting there like I'm not really doing great in my progression. I'm probably like 10 months in to try to be a 2K player. I got a few connections and now I lost my only way to kind of make money. Things got, things got a little scary for a couple months, you know. Thank God, you know, my girlfriend was able to help me out at the time. But for, for a lot of people, COVID was like a terrible thing. I know people passed away and stuff. But it, it was really also like a bigger sweet thing. This is the beginning. This is like, damn. Like, I wanted to believe being a lawyer anyway, being an attorney anyway. And here's my chance. Exactly. So, I can't believe that it happened. Because why I was so lucky was the fact that I registered as a attorney, a solo attorney, during right before COVID started, I was able to apply for unemployment through the COVID assistance because my job literally didn't exist anymore. No one was going to court, like that was done. So for a year, <laughs> that's when it ramped up. Now I'm okay, I have something figured out, like I'm getting money obviously from COVID, the, the unemployment stuff, now I'm locked in. I got my little bit of connections, I was like, I'm putting all the stuff I learned from being a lawyer, all the networking and events that 
I went to and just the way that I have like a very charismatic personality, I'm gonna put that into 2K. And slowly but surely, I play on different teams every single, you know, every single season trying to play on different teams, just meeting people, making those connections. Like, I was lucky that I could communicate no matter how I was at the game, my skill, my communication skills, my, my humor, everything worked out really well in building those relationships. So, um, but at this time, you know, my mom is basically thinking that I'm a bum, straight up. Like, I, I, didn't, I stopped being a lawyer, she kept asking me about it, literally just playing video games, and she has no idea that I could lead to a paycheck. I keep telling her, but she don't believe me. After about, I would say, two years of really trying, playing half while I was a lawyer, and then the other half while during COVID, I actually did it. It, it was surreal. Like, a lot of people don't know this about the draft night, um, I wasn't guaranteed at all. Like a lot of people who get drafted are guaranteed and they know 100% they get to put a hat on. They knew based on their relationships or how well they had done that they were getting drafted. I was the 53rd out of, I believe, 63 picks to get drafted and nobody told me anything. I didn't find out I was getting drafted until about five minutes before it actually happened. My future point guard at that time actually texted me like, yo, we're taking you. And then I got a call from the GM and I'm sitting there like, oh my God, like I really, like I really made it. You know, I was one of the oldest rookies to ever get drafted, and I have the GM of the Bucks gaming team on the phone, like, yo, Perm, we're taking you, man. We, we like your, you know, we like what you're gonna bring to the table. Like, we we're excited to have you out here. And I started crying, I can't lie. Like, it, it was, to really put myself out there on the line, leave a profession that everyone thought I was crazy. You know, my mom, a lot of my uncles and aunts, like my, my other lawyers I worked with, my friends, they all thought I was crazy, and I finally could tell them, like, I made it.